true. <laughs> but God allows for us to come together yeah. Yeah. so that he might be able to express what it is that he sees concerning you in advance. So that's why he convenes us together around the word of God. In the case of our text, the preacher, of course, is our Lord Jesus. And ministry, the kind that produces kingdom living, is built and founded on the preached word of God. Here we have the prince of preachers, the great prophet of the church who came into the world to be the light of the world. And up until this point, the prophets and John the Baptist had done a virtuous job of preaching, but now that Christ is here, he excels them all. Amen. Amen. So what's written in the red is yeah. what really works. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Preaching the gospel has the power to cause life to elevate. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Can I say that again? Yes. See, remember my assumption is that everybody desires to advance or elevate in life. Right. Well, if that is your desire, and today is not the day that you're going to die, then you need preaching. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you need it in advance. Amen. Amen. You need your marching orders going forward. You don't just need a word to handle what happened. Why are you worried about what happened? It happened. Right. And it don't make no difference what word come concerning. It's over. And too many of us are living forward looking backwards. So preaching is really not to, to solve your past hurts, even though it does. Preaching is designed to give you marching orders going forward. And if you desire to advance, then you need preaching. Preaching. You, you, you need preaching. So, so often we gather for reasons other than preaching the gospel. We come because they got good children's ministry. We come because they got great saints. We, we come because they got a handsome men's choir. Amen. Amen. Y'all sit there and y'all so saved. You know full well that you didn't get all gussied up with your dog. He saw you with your rollers. <laughs> you come for all kinds of reasons, but the fact of the matter is that none of them have the power to get you out of what's holding you back. Only the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to challenge, to charge, and to change us. For he is the eternal wisdom that laid in the bosom of the Father before the world was perfectly made and he knows the perfect yeah. will of God for John chapter 1 verse 18 says this one no one has ever seen God but God the one and only who is at the father's side and has made him known mm -hmm. Christ centered preaching is what focuses on what it takes to advance from here <laughs> to there so that it is in him who we have in common, the standard in which to start to build our life on. Mm -hmm. For he is the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. It is his truth that triumphs over the truth of our experiences. Mm -hmm. It is he who introduces us to the good news through repentance. Mm -hmm. And repentance is, once again, the entryway of the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, making his message in the Beatitudes the measuring stick that gives light to what the kingdom lifestyle looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slow down in order to speed up. The Beatitudes becomes the method on how to expose what we need to repent for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. Amen. The Beatitudes becomes the method on how to expose what I need to repent for. From. Mm -hmm. For repentance is the process to reform both our judgment and our practices. Mm -hmm. For it is how we have viewed life and how we're living life that has created the separation from the life giver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Can I say that again? Yeah. It's, it's, it's how we judge what we're in and who we're with and what we're doing with them that has really honestly separated us from God. So therefore, repentance is needed in order to bring us back. But if you don't know what you need to repent from, then you just default to doing what you've been doing with who you've been doing it with for as long as you know to do it till you can't do it no more. And then you come up with the things I used to do I don't do no more. Well, that's because you can't. <laughs> Until they come up with a pill for it, you, you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no examination of ourselves before we find ourselves wrecking ourselves. Malachi chapter 3 verse 7 says this, Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees, and you have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Our inherited and practiced sins have separated us from our God. And, and it is repentance found through the Beatitudes that exposes us to the answers for how we return to him. Are y'all all right? Amen. I know this is a whole lot of stuff. I'm just setting things up for the next couple of weeks. So I just wanted to talk about it. <laughs> so what is our first takeaway about the kingdom and, and how Christ started his ministry? The first takeaway is that it's preaching. That we need preaching, and not just any kind of preaching. We need Christ-centered preaching. I don't need intellectualism. I don't need your opinion. I don't need socialism. I need Christ-centered preaching. Because, see, you can engage me into all kinds of activities to make me feel good about what I'm doing. But if what I'm doing ain't what he created me to do, then I'm going to show up undone. Do you understand that? Amen. So all preaching ain't the same. Amen. Let me be very clear. Amen. Just because you can hoop, ha, <laughs> and you can holler. Amen. If you ain't saying nothing, <laughs> then shut up. <laughs> Amen? Amen? What you say has to have substance, and the only substance that matters is Christ. Amen. world is perishing, so for you to get actively engaged in worldly things means you're going to die with them. So you better do what Christ told you to do. Let all the other stuff go wherever it's going. So you need preaching. Amen? In order to start making sure that you're in the kingdom. Number two. The text gives us the second indication of, of what Christ focused on, <clears throat> which was the place, the place, mm -hmm. the place. So it wasn't just preaching, but it was also the place. I'm still in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. It, it not only says that when he saw the crowds, but, but then it goes on, because there's a comment. It says, he went up a mountainside. Do you see that? So it wasn't just the preaching. It was also the place, a mountainside. See, see. I'm going to try to work this properly. Not, not only does preaching create the context for kingdom living, but the place where the gospel is preached matters. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. The place must have a purpose. Right. In that, power rests in the presence of God, which is brought about by the purpose for which the people have gathered. Okay. I said a whole lot right there in that little substance, and, and I'd like to be able to stop, but y'all looking at me crazy, so I'm going to say that again and try to come back at it another way. The place must have purpose. And, and the purpose is, is, is that the power rests in the presence of God, which is only brought about by the purpose for which the people have gathered. See, many people choose where they're going to worship and when they're not going to worship by the place that they worship. <laughs> if the place looks like a place where God would be, then they choose to go there. But if the place don't look like a place where God is, then I don't know about that. <laughs> But that is not the purpose of kingdom living. Kingdom living 
is created by the place that is only created by the purpose for which the people have gathered. It's not about the building as much as it is the hearts of the people in the building. I've been in many a grand cathedral. And when it was all said and done, it was a glorified mausoleum. Whitewashed tombs. Beautiful places. Acoustics. Just would need a mic. Mm -hmm. But God ain't been in that place <laughs> for so long. And I've been in some other places that would cause you to scratch your head and question on whether or not this is the place you need to be at night or in the day. <laughs> but when you stepped up in, come on, Jesus. Moving from heart to heart. Yeah. I, I just, I just, the place is, is important. Yeah. The text says a mountainside in, in Galilee. And as things go, so it is that our Lord Jesus was ill accommodated. He had no convenient place to preach. Any more than he had a place to lay his head. I just I, I gotta pause parenthetically and just ask the question.